Ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul, a U.S. Army combat veteran. It is July 13th, 2022. This is your daily Ukraine update, and while not much is changing on the front lines, there is some interesting developments in Russia's race to develop parity in the drone arms race. Let's get into it. So first off, on the frontline map, there are very few changes. There's literally one small change, um, and it's probably best expressed as a clarification. It is right down here in this village of Novo Bakhmutivka, uh, in which initially the reporting was that the Russians had pushed all the way up to this small lake here, uh, but in fact they don't e they don't even control the entirety of the village. So it's listed on the map as a clarification. Um, so that I think it's fair to say uh, that this is not really reflective of any major Russian movements uh, from an operational perspective. Instead, it seems like their operational pause is continuing. They are continuing to refit uh reconstitute their forces and set do limited operations to prepare for their next major offensive now what is interesting in the news is that the uh iranian drones up to several hundred uavs or unmanned aerial vehicles um will be provided by iran to russia um Russia will provide the UAVs and train them as early as this month. Um, apparently, Russian bloggers, sort of independent war correspondents, have been critical of the Kremlin for their inability to get these sort of uh, fire direction drones in the hands of Russian forces. As we've seen in all the video breakdowns that I've done, the Ukrainian forces are excellent at using their artillery while they don't have an advantage in total number of artillery by using drones to provide instant feedback on their target, target locations, and fire direction. They can make their artillery infinitely more accurate than Russian artillery that might have, if they're lucky, a forward observer with a radio. But if they're not lucky, they may just be firing at targets, hoping they hit it. Uh, that's what makes UAV so powerful is that even well behind enemy lines where a person or soldier cannot get, these UAVs can fly over and provide that fire direction. So in order to sort of close that gap, the Kremlin has reached out to Iran and Iran actually has a number a very interesting drone program. So they have been developing their in-house drone program for decades. Um, since at least the 90s, possibly as early as the 80s. But what's most interesting is that in 2011, an American RQ Sentinel, uh, RQ-170 Sentinel UAV, one of the largest uh, and most effective American UAVs at the time. Let's see if we can get a picture of it right here. Right, this is the Sentinel, uh, a huge stealth UAV built in 2000. Seven only 20 to 30 exist, and one of them crashed in Iran in December of 2011. Uh, the they developed in turn their own version, the Shahed 136, uh, which they call it a loitering precision attack drone. And basically, the way these drones can be used, right? The Sentinel is powerful in that it can just fly at a tremendous altitude. Uh, and can observe a uh, loiter overhead for hours and hours and hours. Uh, the Sentinel, if you need a scale, it has a wingspan of 65 feet uh, and is 14 feet long. So it is the size of a proper aircraft, but uh, apparently the Iranians have scaled it down. There's a smaller version, the 131, um, and these aircraft are have been field tested as you guys know uh, iran is one of the belligerents in the proxy war in yemen in which saudi arabia and iran are sort of backing different horses in that civil war and are giving them their respective uh technologies and military capabilities so iran has provided these drones to their houthi rebels so They've, these drones have also been used in attacks against Saudi Arabia itself, Israeli-linked cargo ships, and even against U.S. bases in Iraq. 
Now, what is the range of Iranian drones? Well, the Iranian drones actually have a really impressive uh, capability and development. Uh, they can have a flight endurance up to five hours, so they can be on station for five hours. Uh, they can reach and communicate over 200 kilometers away and up to 500 kilometers with proper radio uh, satellite or satellite radio antennas. There are rumors that there's a newest generation of Iranian drones with a thousand kilometers of range and 24 hours of loitering time overhead. So currently the majority of Iranian UAVs carry miniature guided bombs, but they may be soon armed with missiles capable, capable of reaching targets up to eight kilometers away, uh, which would make them far more lethal than the commercial drones that we've seen the Ukrainian forces do. Now, the Iranians may not provide armed drones and the Russians may not ask for them, uh, right? The Russians have a strategy that is allowing them to take territory and achieve their objectives. So simply having a drone with, you know, five to 12 hours of time on station that can search for targets, guide in uh, indirect fire artillery, that is going to give them a massive, massive advantage given that they are superior in number in artillery pieces, though the Ukrainians right now are seem to be generally superior in accuracy thanks to their use of drones. If Russia can even close some of that gap, it could really change the balance of power in this fight. But it will be very interesting to see, as we've seen with other things, uh, experience in Middle Eastern conflicts do not always translate to uh, the more modern European battlefield. And that is where these drones have gotten most of their operational testing, operational experience, is fighting in Middle Eastern conflicts like uh, the fight against ISIS, uh, the, you know, the Iraq Civil War. Um, and the uh, civil war in Yemen. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily claim this is all doom and gloom for sure, but, and it, I suspect that there's no way these drones have been developed by the Iranians for 10 years and that the US hasn't thought long and hard about how to stop them. So there may be some tricks up uh, the United States sleeve uh, that they can share with the Ukrainians about shutting down these drone technologies. Um, you know, the U.S. itself has had a decade to improve on its own drone program, so there may be vulnerabilities in the RQ-170 Sentinel that carry over to these Shahed uh, 149s, etc. So. That is all I got for you guys for today. Of course, as always, if you want breakdowns of videos that are just too spicy for me to monetize on YouTube, become a member of the Patreon. Link is in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one.